In this video, we're going to showcase how to export the AGT uh, file for the AGT Beam Master welding machine from Tecla Structures of your metal building. Now, let's start out by first going and getting the uh, plugin for Tecla for the AGT Beam Master export. And we'll go to the Tecla warehouse on the internet here. And you'll sign in with your Trimble identity so that way you can uh, get access to the downloads. Now, once you're logged in, you'll just go ahead and in the search, type in AGT. And then basically you'll see two options here. I'm gonna use the, uh, you know, download the latest version here with the 4.2. And then you'll go to this versions tab page and then you'll see that version. And here I'm just gonna go ahead and actually do the just download. And what that'll do is it'll download a zip file here. And uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and unzip this real quick. So let's just extract this. And then there we go, there's that folder where I just extracted this zip file that downloaded. And then you're gonna see this TSEP file. So TSEP stands for Tecla Structures Extension Package. If you double click on that, it'll open up the extension manager for Tecla Structures. And then you'll select on the version that you wanna install this to, press imports, and then it'll queue that up to be imported. Now I've already installed this in my version of Tecla Structures, but you'll get a message here. Um, you know, Actually, you'll see this too. The package is unsigned. Do you still wanna install it? You'll just say yes to that. And here I'm going to get a message that, hey, this is already installed on my computer, um, you know, but you won't see this. And so it'll say that, hey, it's queued. So just to show you what you'll see, let me actually do 2021. And then I'll just go ahead and say yes. And then this is what you'll see here that, hey, the extension is currently queued and you'll need to restart your version of Tecla Structures. And so that's what you'll do. You'll have Tecla Structures closed, restart it. It'll install the extension and then you'll see it within the Tecla Structures interface. All right, so once you've restarted Tecla Structures, you've opened up your MBS model, and you come over here to the right-hand side of Tecla underneath the Applications and Components panel. You're gonna see this AGT group here, and if you go underneath that, you'll see the AGT export. If you double-click on this button, it's going to open up a dialog box, and you have the ability to uh, specify the location and the name of the export file. By default, what it'll do is it'll take the current job uh, name for the Tecla Structures model and then put an AGTX um, extension at the end of that. Really all this is, is when this runs, is it's actually a zip file. If you rename the AGTX to .zip, you'd be able to actually unzip it and see that there's a set of folders and individual XML files which describe the uh, part locations on the assembly as well as weld information, which gives instructions to the Cortex software that AGT has um, to process um, how an assembly is grouped and welded together, and then basically how to actually do the welding on the robot. Now, you have an option here to uh, create the export from all of the steel in the model or selected. I'm gonna go ahead and choose selected because it just then means less things for uh, the software to process. And what I might do is I might come down here to a selection filter. So if I actually come down here, I've already got inside of my firm folder here like a MBS hot rolled. And really all I did is if I just look in this filter, I'm looking for any assembly names that are that contain rafter or column in it, which is gonna be my three plate or my hot rolled wide flange steel for my end walls or whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, load up that selection filter. I'll window around the model. And you can see that again, only the steel that I'm really gonna be feeding to the welding machine is gonna be highlighted or selected here. And then there is this advanced settings tab. And honestly, um, you know, you can, you can choose the import welds from Tecla option. Um, I actually looked at this, uh, having this on or off, and it doesn't really matter. When you actually go look in the export files um, and take a deeper look, the weld data gets exported whether you have this checked or not. Um, so it doesn't really matter, but in, technically we do want the weld data to be exported. Now something to understand is that um, on the welds in the model, like if you do accurately put the welds in and they do come across from MBS, which there are some things that I've shown in some of these videos that sort of talk about that. And as long as you have your design weld file and everything like that set up pretty well in MBS, you'll, and, and a couple other things, you'll get pretty accurate welds coming across um, sizes and fillet welds and lengths and things like that. Um, so, but there are two choices that you need to understand when deciding what to do um, with feeding the AGT Beam Master Machine from Tecla. One option is that uh, you can tell like the Cortex software to read the, the welds from the Tecla model. So it'll read the weld geometry, the start and the end point. It'll read the size of the fillet weld and the locations. And then that will feed the machine. 
The other option is to not use the welds from the model and it'll actually look at the contact surfaces of the parts and then it'll look at the thickness of the plies of the material and then automatically sort of like apply a certain table of weld sizes based on those thicknesses. So you have to decide exactly what it is that you're going to be doing. If you have a lot of special conditions for welds like these, uh, for instance, on clips where you have this half-sided weld here and there, you don't want to let AGT just kind of look at the contact surfaces because it's going to put a, a you know entire weld across there and you don't want that on hundreds of clips across your job. So these are the types of tests and things that you need to evaluate as far as what's going to be the best result for feeding your machine. And the more accurate you can get that welding information in Tecla Structures from MBS, then the uh, more accurate that you can get the welding to come across in the AGT export and on your machine. So I've got this selected here. Again, most uh, fabricators don't really have bolted accessories like shop bolted accessories and things like that, but I think that that's what that option there is for. We're not really gonna check for collisions or anything like that. Um, and so really, uh, I would just probably select this one option here. You have uh, all the pieces selected that you wanna uh, export for those assemblies and you press okay. Now, there's an important message here, and I want you to make sure that you read this and, and you know, pay attention to this. Don't just click through it. But essentially what happens is if you do not have the polygon weld creation option um, turned on for the slide rule import into Tecla from MBS, what will happen is this AGT export uh, is going to convert all of the welds in your model um, to essentially uh, be polygon welds. And so it, it runs a, a like just an algorithm in the background that turns all regular simple Tecla welds, if those are in the model, turns them into polygon welds. So that way you can read the actual start point and welding geometry better for exporting into the AGT file. And so what it tells you here is that, hey, I'm going to do that, which, can, which is actually going to kind of show as a modification to the entire model which will cause like the numbering flag to be out of date. And so you don't want to save the model after you run this export. It's basically telling you before you uh, press the yes button here to start the export, make sure your model is completely numbered, make sure that you've saved your model so that way it's up to date, then press yes and then you're going to reopen the model without saving. So we're going to do that here. I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. See where it uh, selected all the welds, converted them to polygon welds. Now I have a lot of the polygon welds coming in from slide rule already to be set as polygon welds, but not everything gets created as polygon welds. And then there's a log file here to take a look at. I have looked at on this model, it's some user defined attribute um, field here that doesn't understand, so there's nothing really wrong. But if there is any errors in the error log, you'll wanna take a look at that. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna press okay here. Now I'm gonna close this down. And again, I'm gonna reopen the model. So if I just go to open recent, and then I'll go back to my model here, just say open, and I'm going to say no to save the changes in the model because I don't want that, uh, that flagging for my numbering to be messed up. So I'll just reopen. And there we go, so now I'm back in the model. All right, so we'll just go up here and open up the model folder. And then we will do by date modified here at the top of the model folder so we can see the AGT file and then the log file. So if we open up the log file, we can see that there's just something here where it didn't understand that there was a, like a dash or something written into the user defined attribute coming from MBS. I don't think it's a problem and it shouldn't cause any issues there. But then here we also have the AGTX file that was exported. Again, this is just a zip file. In fact, if you renamed this here to zip for the file extension, you won't do this when you're sending this to the shop, but I just want you to see and understand. This is a zip file uh, for each assembly, and then there's an XML file that actually describes the geometry of the parts and the welds inside of that for each assembly, and then the quantities and things as well. So again, we would probably just leave that at the extension that's there, look at the air log file, see if there's any issues, and then you would send um, basically this AGTX file across to your Cortex software and process that for feeding to your Beam Master robot. Now, one last thing I do want to explain is that in the slide rule INI file, which configures basically how things are imported from MBS slide rule into Tecla structures, there is this weld options section. And there are three different settings that you can set up here. And again, if you are going to the Beam Master and you want to set as many model uh, welds as possible to polygon welds, and then even have separate weld objects for different welds, um, which would then like, you know, kind of have a different unique weld geometry for every weld in the model. Then you can set all three of these uh, options that MBS defines here for uh, welding to yes. So split double-sided welds is basically just gonna say, like for instance here, if I go to an end plate, 
you see that there's a top and a bottom weld here. And then essentially what that does is like, even though that's like a near side, far side weld, when I switch this to yes, it's taking double sided welds and actually putting in two separate weld objects. Then it's also creating polygon welds because I have that set to yes, which is basically, I know that I have a polygon weld here because I can see a start grip point on the weld and an end grip point, which again, just defines the weld length and geometry, which AGT actually likes. And then there's one other option here, split half-sided welds uh, equals yes. And that's going to be these welds at the clips, which is what we want. We want basically a three inch weld here and a three inch weld here. And we have a nice polygon weld. Now you don't necessarily have to use these polygon welds and turn all these to yes. I'm just doing this because that way I can really isolate and see each of the physical weld geometries. But when it comes to shop drawings, if you're going to show the model welds on shop drawings, then you may actually want the weld symbol to combine these uh, welds uh, to a, if you're going to use a, te a simple Tecla weld where it's not a polygon weld where you have the start and the end point and you just let AGT convert the simple welds upon the export like I was just doing. But basically, if you leave these at simple welds and then you tell it not to split the separate welds, what will happen is when you click on the weld symbol, it's going to show like a near side and far side fillet weld. And I did look at the XML file and that data does uh, appear to uh, come across in the XML file. Like so it knows that there's a near side, far side weld and different sizes and things like that. So you'll just need to run tests as far as what's the most optimal, optimal configuration for feeding your AGT machines and then also managing uh, you know, how you're going to display weld symbols on shop drawings if you're going to turn uh, model weld marks on um, versus use like a weld table in the Tecla drawings or only show non-standard welds based on your standards. So these are just some of the things that you need to kind of evaluate as you optimize the best export for AGT as well as making your drawings. For additional training and setup and configuration of MBS slide rule with Tecla structures, please reach out to me at my contact information shown and I'd be glad to help.